Hi, I'm Hadley Wickham, and in the next five minutes, I'm going to give you the five big ideas behind tidy evaluation. The first big idea is that R code is a tree. Every expression in R has a hierarchical structure, which we can visualize using some simple conventions. So here I'm going to use an orange square to represent a function call. The first child of that call is the name of the function, and then the other children are its arguments. So this tree represents a call to a function f with arguments x, the letter y, and the number 1. Now no matter how R code how complicated R codes gets, we can always express it in this way. The tree just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. Now you might wonder, what about, what about expressions like this? It doesn't look like we've got any function calls here. But actually, R has a surprising property that every R expression can be written in the so-called prefix form, where the name of the function comes before its arguments. So here we have the assignment arrow and the multiplication operator in front of the arguments. So no matter how, no matter what R expression you write, you can always write this as a tree. The next big idea is that you can capture that tree by quoting that argument. And here I'm going to use two functions from the Rlang package, expra and nexpra. So expra captures your expressions, the developer, you the developer of the function's expressions. It always gives you back exactly what you gave it. The other paired function is in expra that is going to quote the user's expression. It's going to capture what the user, user passed to your function. Now this allows us to introduce some new vocabulary. We can talk about arguments being evaluated using the usual R rules, or where they can be quoted using captured using expra or in expra or one of the related functions from base L. So these quoting functions are used throughout the tidyverse, in particular because it gives us this, these, these really amazing powers where we can write dplyr code, for example, where we write R code, and then behind the scenes dbplyr can inspect that tree of code and figure out how to translate it into SQL. The third big idea is that we can use the opposite of quoting, unquoting, to build up complex trees from smaller fragments. So what does this look like? Well, first of all, let's capture this expression x plus y and save it into a variable. And then let's create some more complex expressions using this. And to do so, we're going to use the unquoting operator pronounced bang bang. So here we have expra bang bang x y plus z. That is going to generate the expression x plus y plus z. Now what happens if we do 1 over bang bang x y? Well, because we're manipulating trees here, we're going to get the correct expression, 1 over x plus y, not 1 over x plus y. How does this work? Let's take a very simple example. Here I'm going to define this expression x, so it's just a plus b, and then I'm going to unquote it into this call to f. Basically, all we're doing is merging those two trees together, making a complex tree from two simpler pieces. The fourth big idea is if you want to wrap a function that quotes one or more of its arguments, you need to quote one or more of your arguments and then you need to unquote them. This gives us a really simple but powerful pattern if we want to wrap around any function in the tidyverse. For example, if you want to create a scatter plot using the development version of ggplot2, you here I'm going to supply a data frame, an x variable and a y variable. I quote the x variable and the y variable using nexpr, and then I unquote them in the call to AES. Similarly, if I want to create my own summarized function, which computes the mean and standard deviation of whatever variable I call it with, I quote that variable using nexpr, and then I use unquoting to when I call the function that uses quoting. And here, because unquoting works with trees, I can insert that variable name at any point. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't quite work because one thing I haven't talked about is the environment in which those expressions are evaluated. And this is important when you start to mingle variables from the data frame, like x, and variables from the environment, like y. And here, when you evaluate this, you would hope that we use the definition of n defined here, 100, but it does not. It's actually going to use the definition of n from up here in the incorrect environment. So to fix that, we need to learn one new idea, the idea of a quotient, which is a portmanteau of 
closure and quotation, which captures both the expression and the environment in which it should be evaluated. So if I change my mutate function from using in expra to just using in quo, I now correct, get the correct result. It now uses in from the global environment, not from the function, not from the environment inside the function. So five big ideas if you want to understand tidy evaluation. First of all, all R code is a tree, no matter how complex or no matter what type of R code you write. You can capture that tree by quoting an argument or more than one argument. You can use unquoting to build up complex trees from smaller fragments. If you want to wrap a function that quotes one or more of the arguments, you need to quote your arguments and then you need to unquote them when you pass them along. And finally, to make that work 100% correctly, rather than capturing an expression, you need to capture a quotient, which is a combination of an expression and its environment.